somehow every time you click render on your newly created edit and then look at it, it turns out to be so choppy, completely different from what you imagine it to look like. What can I do to make my edits look smoother? Why is this so hard? Well, don't worry, because today we'll explain to you how you can make your edits look way smoother instead of having them look choppy like this. And to do that, we have to understand what makes our edits choppy. Oftentimes, your edit is going to turn out choppy because of the clips you use. Which doesn't mean you have to use clips that are 240 FPS with 8K quality. But you should make sure that there's no missing frames or glitches within the actual clip that you use. Because when the choppiness is going out from your base clip, there's nothing really we can do and it's just going to be hard to work your way around it. Also, make sure that in the clip or scene back that you use, the frame rate is constant and it doesn't just drop throughout the clip. Once you've got the right clips that you can use for your edits. A mistake that I see so many people do is limit the frame rate of the actual clip within After Effects. But don't worry, there's an easy fix for that, which is going to go into our project's composition settings. If you don't know how to open them, just right click onto your composition, go to composition settings, and there you have them. Now the setting that you want to change is the frame rate, because obviously your composition frame rate is going to impact the FPS that your edit is going to turn out in. And because I want my edits to be in 60 FPS, which for me is the smoothest frame rate, I'm going to put this value to 60. Now you're just going to have to decide for yourself which frame rate you want to use for your edits. For me, 60 works the best. Once that's done, just press on OK. And now your composition frame rate is set to 60 FPS, which in my opinion makes a huge difference to the appearance of your edit. Now, because most of our scenes are not going to be in 60 FPS, but rather 24 FPS, we're also going to have to adjust them to our newly changed composition frame rate. And to do that, we're going to change the frame blending mode. As you can see, I have my clip imported into my After Effects. And to check what frame rate our clip has, we can just right click on the footage, go to interpret footage and click on main. Now, as you can see, my clip is in 23.976 FPS. And to now adjust this frame rate to our composition frame rate, we're going to go ahead to frame blending and we're going to hit this little box twice till it shows that image. Enabling this option is just going to control how your frames are being blended together and therefore make your edit seem way smoother. Enabling this setting might increase your render time by a little bit, but make sure to use it because it's overpowered and definitely worth a try. Also, make sure to enable it not for only one clip, but for all the clips you have in your edit. Next thing that we want to do, if you have a lot of movement in your edit going on or a lot of motion, we're going to enable motion blur. What that does, it basically adds a little blur every time something moves in your edit and it will just make the movement in your edit look way more natural and remove the overall stiffness. And enabling motion blur is pretty straightforward. Just go onto the clip that you want to put it on and you can see this little box next to the pixel motion frame blending that we enabled earlier. We're just going to go one to the right and enable the motion blur as well. Now, if you look at the movement you have in your edit, it will already make it look way smoother and increase the look of it. The next thing that's absolutely detrimental to make your edits look way smoother is adding graphs to your animations. Because using the standard linear graphs as the name already reveals it's just going to make your animation go linear and if you want to have control over how your edit moves i would definitely advise you to start implementing the usage of graphs into your editing style now to implement such a graph go ahead and select the keyframes of the animation that you want to change right click onto them go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease now you can click this little box which will open a graph editor and as the name already says from here on you can edit your graph now note that there's two different types of graphs which you can change from by right clicking onto the graph and either selecting speed or value graph. In this case, I'm going to use the value graph and to now change it, you can click onto it. Now, if you want your animation to be fast at the beginning, we're going to go ahead and drag this value up. But if you want it to be fast at the end, we're going to go ahead and drag the top value down. Now, the difference is that the speed graph in After Effects measures speed or velocity over time, whereas the value graph measures the value over time. Now, note this is only a rough explanation about how these graphs work. There's actually a lot more you can do with it, so please don't come for me in the comments. You just have to experiment with these handles a bit and try what fits the best for your edits, because for every animation that you use, a different graph is going to be beneficial. Now, the next thing that you definitely watch out for are Twixter settings. If you don't use Twixter for your velocity, just skip this step, but I'm guessing most of you do. And I know that probably most of you completely disregard the settings that are given within the Twixter plugin. So buckle up because I'm going to guide you to all the important settings that you need to make your edits look way smoother. Once you edit the Twixter Pro effect, the first thing that we want to do is change the input frame rate. What value you want to put here is the amount of frames per second that your scene pack or clip has. So in my case, because we checked earlier, we already know that it's going to be 23.976. But if your clip, for example, is 30 FPS, just put in 30. Next, we're going to go ahead to the image prep and change it from non to contrast slash edge enhance. Go to frame interval interpolation and set it from blend to motion weighted blend. Last but not least, we want to change the warping from interverse to interverse with smart blend. Now just go ahead, set your keyframes for your Twixer effect, and you should already see a huge boost in smoothness and overall quality. But don't worry, this isn't even the last tip I have for you. So buckle up because we're about to dive into some real stuff. Because sometimes the motion blur that's integrated within After Effects won't do all of the work for us. And to know kind of help out with that, we can add real smart motion blur. Which by the way, you can get on my Discord completely free. Check out the link in the description for that. Now this is 
is going to apply a natural looking motion blur by tracking each pixel individually. And if this doesn't already look good enough, I'm going to show you how to do it now. And once you've installed it from the link that you can find on my Discord server, just go into your effects and presets panel and search for RSMB. Add RSMB Pro to your clip. And now for the settings, we're going to set the main background blur amount to 1.2 instead of 0.5 and the main background sensitivity from 70 up to 100. And I promise you, once you start adding this effect to your edits, it's going to look way better. It's not even going to be comparable to the edits you did before. And if you now have multiple clips and you want to put RSMB on all of them at once, don't worry, just select all of the layers you want to put it on. Press Ctrl, Shift and C to bring up this pre-composing window. Select the bottom option, enable this check mark and press OK. Now, as you can see, you have all the elements into one composition. And now just drag the effect onto your layer again and change the settings. And I think today is going to be your best day as an editor because you made it to the final tip in which I will show you how you can boost your edits from looking like this into looking like this. And this is actually a mistake I see so many new editors do because adding a good color correction can boost the quality of your edits by a lot. I mean, just look at the difference. So I would definitely recommend you to get a good color correction for yourself to boost the quality of your edits to the top. And if you know wonder where you can get such a color correction, of course I got you. Check out the first link in the description because as of now, I'm still running a huge winter sale. You can get up to 70% of, of the presets that I use for my edits to make them look the best. And it's a missed opportunity for everyone who doesn't check it out. So be fast and get your premium presets today and don't miss out on the huge opportunity. Once you implement all these steps I showed you today into your edits, I'm going to promise you they're going to look way smoother. The tips I gave you today are going to boost the quality from my edits from being extremely choppy to extremely smooth within minutes. And if this tutorial was helpful and your edits are looking crispier than ever now, make sure to like and let me know in the comments what tutorial you want to see next. Also, I would be really thankful if you subscribe to this channel because only a minority of you people watching my content are actually subscribed. And I love making these videos for you where I can help you guys and in order for you to not miss out on my newest videos explaining all the secrets of being an editor I would really recommend you to subscribe also make sure to check out my discord channel the links to that in the description below we're a huge community of editors who just help each other you can get free stuff or just talk to me it's a good environment for a new editor to be in with that being said I sincerely thank you for watching and as always see you next time